let's talk about prisms. Prisms is generally targets that you look for through the tunnel station. You center your crosses in the middle and to the sides. As you can see, there's downward arrows, so use that as an indication of where to put your downward arrow as well as your crosshair. Then another type of target is just a normal reflective sheet target. This you'll put up on a high wall, on bridges. It's something that you can come back to continuously and measure the exact same point for monitoring a bridge, for example. So you get different types of prisms for different types of applications. As you can see, our current prism that we have here is set to a minus 30 offset, but when we look at the other side, it's got a zero millimeter offset. So each prism has got different offsets on different sides. So always make sure that you know what is the constant to be able to put it into your total station. Welcome to another total station theory session. In today's video, we'll talk more about prism constants. So how do you select the correct prism? So this is a very important question because each job will require a specific type of prism and the way you'll use your prism in the field. So there's a few aspects to consider. I've listed four below, but there's many more. The first one is the different prisms for different purposes. So each survey task has got a specific prism that you can use. Number two, how, do you, how does a prism work? And then number three, how to get optimal accuracy with a prism. And then number four, how to test the prism constant. All right, so we'll look at those four points a bit deeper. Let's go to the first one, which is the different prisms for different purposes. We've listed four different types of prisms. The first one is the normal prism. So this is typically that the prism that your turtle station will come out with. It's a plus minus 30 millimeters um, prism constant. And then you get your high accuracy prisms. So these prisms are a bit smaller and the prism constants are about plus minus 17 millimeters. You'll typically use them for construction sites or highly accurate work. That's what they'll be used for. And then you get your next prism, which is just a normal flat reflectorless target, which you can still measure in normal prism constant mode, not in reflectorless mode, but normal prism mode. So what this means is obviously because your target, your reflective your tape is flat, it will mean that the ray will bounce directly from it, so it won't penetrate, and that will bring it to a zero prism constant. And then when you move over to your reflectorless measurement on your total station, then anything can become a prism. When you measure the corner of a building, that's your prism. If you measure a tree, that's your prism. So anything can return anything that can return a signal will become your prism. Okay, but all this measurement will also be measured at a zero millimeter prism constant. That's why it's so important to make sure that your crosses are centered and exactly on your point of interest. Let's look at the next point. So, how does a prism actually work? So, a prism works as follows. The reflective ray that has been sent out from the turtle station bounces on the sides of the mirrors of your prism and then goes back to your turtle station. And that's also what determines your prism constant. Then the time it takes for a sending signal to return back to the turtle station allows the turtle station to compute the exact distance where your prism is actually located. So this is also a method that is used with the EDM, electronic distance measurement. So it sends out the ray, it bounces on the prism, inside the prism, sends it back. That time it takes allows the turtle station to work out the exact distance. So what makes it very nice with it when you use a turtle station is that you can actually use triangulation, which is calculate positions from angles, and also trilateration, which is calculate positions from actual distances. So to explain this better, Let's maybe draw an example of a prism and how it will actually work. So imagine this is your prism and this is your prism pole. 
right your turtle station will send out the ray into your prism and as it comes in it will bounce on the sides it will penetrate and then go back to your turtle station okay and your turtle station will know what time it should have taken or at what speed it sends out the reflective ray so the time it takes for the signal to return it will automatically be able to calculate a distance for that specific point or position where your prism is located at so let's look at the next point how to get optimal accuracy with a prism so to get optimal accuracy with your prism you actually need less movement on your prism we all know that when somebody holds a prism for us it always moves around so let's take this as an example there's your prism and there's your prism pole this pole is 1.5 meters long but somebody else is holding this prism and they are moving it slightly obviously not trying to but it still happens and they move it 10 mils to this side or 10 mils to that side and that causes a 10 mil or 20 mil error at the bottom but if you locate this prism as close as possible to the ground let's say their example then the movement which is 10 or 20 mils at the top might only be 1 or 2 mils at the bottom so that means that your readings become much more accurate and much more reliable when you bring your prism closer to the ground also smaller prisms intend to be more accurate so the smaller prisms get your prism as close as possible to the ground and that will evidently increase the accuracy of your turtle station readings so let's go over to the next point on how to test the prism constant so this is where most of the turtle station errors come in people use a prism not really knowing what the prism constant is or even trusting that if it says a minus 30 that they it is actually minus 30 but you can never actually trust that every turtle station every prism is different so the way you really establish your own prism constant is with a baseline so what is a baseline a baseline is typically two points with an exact distance so let's say you've got an, a 12 millimeter iron peg there and a 12 millimeter iron peg there you can measure it with a distamat or a normal tape but as accurate as possible let's say you get this distance to be 10 meters okay so this is 10 meters you'll place your turtle station up on one point and then your prism up on the other point when you measure from your turtle station to your prism it should give you a horizontal distance of exactly 10 meters if it does not give you that exact distance or then you what you'll do is you'll plus or minus on your prism constant let's say for example it gives you a distance of 10.030 so that in fact means that means that the turtle station is measuring 30 millimeters further than what the actual point of position is so you'll bring that back to a minus 30 so it means that the turtle station would automatically account for the minus 30 prism constant when it gets a measurement so that will bring you back to a exact 10 meters on that baseline so each turtle station and each prism is different so to know your real prism constant is to be able to test it test your prism constant place your turtle station up on a point put your your prism on the other point measure that exact distance and make sure of your prism constant great and that's it for this prism constant turtle station training see you in the next video